Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is John Coleman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining today's webinar. Uh, my session here is really to touch on the Dualcom Pro range. I'm going to cover the options available within the Dualcom Pro range. I'm also going to cover with you the basic installation for pin triggering. And I'm also going to cover with you serial connectivity to some of the leading control panels. And then I'm also going to cover the MyBase app as well. We have got a Q&A option uh, as we go through the presentation, so you can ask uh, questions and our um, uh, technical manager in Hardesty will answer those questions as we go along. Also, at the end of the webinar, we have got a brief poll, just two questions, which we'd really appreciate your feedback on. So just going into the, uh, the Dualcom Pro product range, uh, Dualcom Pro consists of two parts. We've got DigiAir Pro, which is single path, and then we've got the GradeShift Pro, which is dual path. So I'm going to start off talking to you today about the DigiAir Pro. And within DigiAir Pro, we have two options, radio and IP. So this here is the DigiAir Pro device. We launched the original DigiAir back in 2011, and it's been a great success for CSL over the years. But we've made some fantastic changes to the new DigiAir Pro radio option here. One of the key features that we've added to this is it now utilizes 4G technology. So we're using 4G technology, falling back to 3G, 3G technology, falling back to 2G technology. What we've also put in the DigiAir Pro radio is two roaming SIMs. So that although it's only a single path device, it comes with an active roaming SIM and it comes with a standby roaming SIM. And people quite rightly say to us, why do I need a backup roaming SIM if I've already got a roaming SIM? You can have the best roaming SIM in the world and if you get a localised issue or a local outage, then that SIM card will roam on to another base station or another mast. But every roaming SIM belongs to a network provider. And if that network provider has an issue with their core network platform, then that roaming SIM may not get the permissions that it needs to roam onto another network. So the only way for us to overcome that is to include a second roaming SIM. So if we do get an issue with the active roaming SIM, then the standby roaming SIM will kick in automatically. Within the DigiAir Pro, we've got option number two, which is DigiAir Pro IP. So again, utilizing exactly the same piece of hardware, what we now provide is this IP lead. And quite simply, this connects to the front of the device here, and you will now connect this to the customer's network point or through to the customer's router. So within the DigiAir Pro range, we have radio only or IP only. And they're the two options within the DigiAir Pro range. Next, we move on to the GradeShift Pro. And again, we have two choices. We have Radio Radio and IP 4G. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Radio Radio. So what we do to achieve Radio Radio is we introduce a second 4G module with a separate roaming SIM on a completely separate and diverse roaming platform. So when I put these two modules together, you've now got dual path alarm signaling at all grades without any wires whatsoever. And what we utilize on the GradeShift Pro Radio Radio is now three roaming SIMs. So we have the active and the standby roaming SIM on the main board, and then we have an active roaming SIM on the additional 4G board here. So we're utilize, utilizing three roaming SIMs, which I believe makes it one of the most reliable, safe and secure signaling devices ever made available to the um, signaling marketplace. Because we are becoming more and more reliant on mobile phone networks, we all uh, know that PSTN is going to get switched off by December 2025 and that mass migration will start but probably around 2022. We are becoming more reliant on mobile phone networks. So one of the really good features that we built into the radio radio option is this 4G module here, you can actually take it off and using Cat5 cable, you can connect these terminals here to these terminals across the front. And what you can then do is you can put this 4G module into this remote aerial box. So Cat5 cable, these terminals here to the main board, and you can now mount this up to 50 meters away from the main board. So this could be at the front door where you've got really, really good signal and this could be kept in the control panel where signal is acceptable. Next, within the GradeShift Pro range, we, look, we move to the IP and 4G. 
So when we do IP4G, again, exactly the same piece of hardware, regardless of what option you ordered within the Pro range, you will always receive this as the main board. So single path, dual path, radio only, IP only, radio, radio, IP4G. This is always the board that you'll receive. So when we do IP4G, we have, we've got IP as the primary path and then 4G as a failover. But again, the failover path is the active roaming SIM and the standby roaming SIM. And you can probably understand the theme that we're giving here somewhat when we talk about multiple SIM cards. Every new product that CSL release into the marketplace, be it the Pro Range or even the CSL router, will always have a minimum of two SIM cards, regardless of it being single path or being dual path. So just in the uh, Pro range, I just want to cover the options that we've got. So we've got DigiAir Pro, which is available as radio only or IP only. It says um, coming soon there, it is available. Now it was launched at the beginning of January. This is what we call SP2. The standards have changed quite recently. So for years and years, we spoke about G2, G3 and G4. But from the 1st of June 2019, G2, G3 and G4 was replaced with what we call SPs and DP. So DigiAir Pro is single path two and it will send a poll fail in 25 hours. The next option that we've got is the dual path range. So we've got Great Chip Pro DP2, Radio Radio or LAN Radio. Uh, DP2 sends a poll fail in 31 minutes, which is a massive improvement on the old grade two standards where we were sending a poll fail in 24 hours for a catastrophic failure. Next option that we've got is Great Chip Pro DP2. So again, radio, radio, and LAN radio. So DP2 plus, this would send a poll fail in 11 minutes, which again is a big improvement on the 60 minutes that was the old Gray 3 standards. Next, we've got uh, DP3, again, radio, radio, and LAN and radio. Sends a poll fail in just four minutes. Again, a big improvement from the uh, standards that we used to have for grade four, which was six minutes. And down at the bottom here, we've got a DP4 option. This is only available as radio, radio, and this will send a poll fail in just three minutes. The best way to explain DP4 is if there ever was a grade five in the old standards, which there wasn't, but if there ever was a grade five, then the DP4 would, would fall into that category. A single path failure in 90 seconds, and then a total fail in just um, three minutes. So what I'm going to talk to you now about is the, uh, the installation for the unit. And as I mentioned before, there are a couple of ways of installing the unit. We've got traditional pin triggering, and then we've got serial connectivity. What we try to do with the Pro Range is to make it the simplest and most straightforward product to install. So what we put together here is the, um, is the nine step guide for installing the uh, Dualcom Pro unit. So I'm just going to go through the first few steps with you and then I'm actually going to show you live on one of the units here just so you can get a better understanding of what we do. So step one is that you would put the uh, Dualcom Pro on test with the ARC. This is exactly the same thing that you would do today with any of your signaling devices. Step two, you will put the Dualcom Pro in the panel and you'll connect the aerial provided. I'm going to touch on the aerial in just a moment because we have done some clever things with that. Now we're utilizing dual radio, we also need two aerials. The next thing you would do is wire the panel digi outputs to the Dualcom Pro's inputs and also connect the fault relay to the, uh, to the panel. Within this little nine step guide, down here we've also put together the diagrams that show you how to connect up the uh, fault output through to the line fault output of a control panel or to a zone on a control panel. So you've actually got this to refer to, so depending on what panel you're using determines which way you would need to connect up the, uh, the, the fault relay. Next thing that we do is we apply power to the device. As with all Dualcom products, we operate from 9 volts to 30 volts, so you can utilise it on 12 volt intruder or 24 volt fire. The next thing you, that you would do is you'll wait five minutes just for the Dualcom to download its configuration. So this is one that I prepared earlier. So this is now a, uh, the, a, a dual radio device that I've got connected up here. So what we're looking for when the unit does its download are these three LEDs here. And these three LEDs, the LED number one and LED number two needs to be on solid or flashing and LED number three needs to be on solid. So once we've got those three LEDs, so LED one and two on or flashing, LED number three on solid, 
it now means that we're ready to do the insulation. Before I go into the insulation, I did mention about the aerial, which I'm just going to show you now. So what we've done with the pro unit is we've actually, when we're doing dual radio, is we've actually built a twin aerial. So we've got one aerial with a polarity from top to bottom and another aerial with a polarity from back to front. So when you put these two aerials together, you've now got what is two aerials that looks like one aerial. But what we do with the every unit that goes out within the box, we actually include a guide that shows you the best way to install the aerial. We've had some really, really positive feedback on the aerial. Some installers prefer to fit the aerial like that. Some prefer to separate the aerials so one can be three meters over there and the other one can be three meters over there. Ultimately, it's all dependent on the signal strength that you're getting on the displays that determines if you need to separate those aerials. So next, just coming back to the unit here. I'm just gonna show you a couple of things on here now before I go into the actual install. As you can see on the front of the device, it's now saying 60% um, on GSM number one, utilizing 4G. So six, 60%, GSM number one, on 4G. So it's saying that this main board is operating on 60% on 4G technology. Because we've got the second module on there, you can also see the signal strength for the second module. What you'll see here are four dip switches. And with on the dip switches, on dip switch number four, if you were just to toggle that across, then what we'll now see is 70% on GSM number two utilizing 4G. So by toggling the dip switch, that will then show you the signal strength for either the main board or for the second board. So you get, now you can see what the signal strength is and also what technology is being used as well. So the next thing to do when we're installing the units, if we're doing pin triggering, we will then have to learn the input. So same as what you would do on any of the existing grade shift and DigiAir products that you've all been installing over the years. So in order to learn the inputs, quite simply, we've got three buttons here, A, B, and C. So in order to learn the inputs, quite simply, we press and hold button C until L is displayed. What we will then see is learn OK being displayed across the front of the device there. So we now know that the dual com device has now learned the inputs correctly. The next stage that we've got in installing the device is we now have to trigger test calls. In order to trigger the test calls, again, we go back to the A, B and C buttons. So we press A until S is displayed. We press C and what you'll now see on the display is path, tests, okay. The final thing that you would do is, like with any installation, if you're doing pin triggering, is that you would then test all your channels through to the ARC in exactly the normal way that you're doing it. But because we're utilizing dual radio in many cases, there is nothing else to do when you're doing pin triggering. Quite simply following that nine step guide and then you're going to install on pin triggering in I would say in probably under 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to install it. We've invested quite a lot in technology. We have the acquisition of Amazon and the acquisition of uh, uh, Webway. And within those acquisitions, that gave us some great technology that we've incorporated into the new product range. So what we've also built into the, uh, the product range is the ability to do a lot of serial connectivity to control panels, also utilizing app technology to program up devices. So what I'm now going to do is go into a bit more detail. So if you don't want to do pins and you want to do serial connection, just how that you would do that. So what we built uh, around the Dualcom Pro product is a new app called MyBase. So quite simply, if you want to utilize MyBase, you will go into the app here. It will ask for your password or your fingerprint, depending on how you've set up the device. So if you're on site, what you would then do is you go to your camera option on the app, and then you would take your Pro unit and you will scan the QR code. Once you've scanned the QR code, what we'll now see are some options up here. So we've got site. So this site last polled on the 7th of April, 2020 at 10.21. So uh, literally a few minutes ago, we can see that radio module number one is on eight out of 10 now. So 80% utilizing 4G. And we can see that radio module number two 
is on seven out of 10 utilizing 4G. What we can do from here is that we can send test calls from here as well. So whilst on site, if we were to select send test alarms, this will deliver test alarms through to the monitoring station. And a really good feature on this as well is that we've got the app version, but we've also got a browser version. So everything I'm gonna show you now on the app, you can actually do on a desktop or on a laptop. So say for example, you got a call from a customer unsure if the device was working correctly, then from the office, you could then trigger test alarms through to the ARC. So without even going to site, you can now trigger a test alarm through to the monitoring station and make sure they've arrived through to the ARC. So as we scroll down, the next part we come to here is service. So you can see here, it will show us the CSL ID number. So that's basically the chip number. We can see where the unit's installed. So this would be the site name. You can add the address into this as well. So you can actually add where the unit is installed. Once you add a site name into the MyBase platform, this then becomes a search parameter. So if you've got lots of devices on your MyBase app or on the browser version, then you can just search by the site name and it'll bring up all the information that you need on that site. As we scroll down a little bit more, we then come to when the site was first commissioned. This was on the 23rd of December at 1609. It tells us what the product is. This is actually a DP1 product, Radio Radio. Uh, the installer code, every installer that orders a product has a unique code and that helps us to uh, ensure that everything's safe and secure locked behind our, um, our own uh, uh, network just to make it super safe really. And uh, what ARC it's connected to and then we've also got an option here called Smart Reporting which I'm going to touch on in just a moment. So again if I go into the app I can edit the address here so I can put in the site name, I can put in the address if I want to as well. Smart reporting, as I mentioned before, is a really, really good feature. One of the big frustrations that we have as an industry is radio fails and single path fails when you've got a dual path device installed. And what typically happens with a single path failure, it happens at three o'clock in the morning. So what will happen is you'll have your dual path device installed, you'll get a radio fail at three in the morning, and at three in the morning, your monitoring station will phone your customer and it'll go along the lines of, hi, Mrs. Smith, we're just calling from your monitoring station to let you know that you've had a radio fail. And Mrs. Smith, will, Mrs. Smith will say, what can I do about that? And the ARC will say, absolutely nothing, but we've got to tell you about it. So the great feature that we've included within the uh, Pro range is the smart reporting. So quite simply, what that means is that between the hours of six o'clock at night and nine o'clock in the morning, once the alarm is in a set condition, then we will manage any single path failures. And the standards now also say that we, as a platform provider should manage those single path failures because we all know that we're going to get radio fails. We all know that we're going to get IP fails. It's out of our control sometimes. So the one thing that we can do is just manage those single path failures. If we did get a radio fail at three o'clock in the morning and then we got somebody kicked in at the front door, you would then get a confirmed alarm. So you don't lose anything. The only thing that you lose is that nuisance call to the ARC at three o'clock in the morning. So I believe it's probably the best feature that we've got in here because we obviously keep the end user happy. So next we move down to the hardware. Um, every device has got its own unique serial number. You can see here that you can set it up for either pin, so for pin learn, but what we've also got is a number of control panels that we can connect this to by a serial connection. So again, we go into the app and then we go into edit panel. So all of these panels listed on here is the extensive list that you can connect to for serial connectivity. So uh, RS-232, RS-485, uh, TTL on certain control panels. And we've got all the leading mainstream control panels on here. We've also got some of the older legacy control panels. So if you're doing takeovers and you want to provide an element of upload, download and remote support, then you can go back to some really old control panels in order to do this. For the purpose of this, we'll, we'll select Pyronix Euro RS-232, which means that we would connect via 232. When we do serial connection, we're no longer programming up the dual comm device. We're actually gonna program up the control panel because it's actually the dual comm and the control panel that are now communicating with, with each other. So once you've selected your panel and you've pressed save changes, then quite simply what you're then going to do is go back to a panel guide. So within the app, down at the bottom here, we've got an option called support. Click on support and it will take, take you to the help files. We load up the help files and then we've got an option here, which is called panel guide. 
click onto the panel guides and then we've got a step-by-step -step simple install guide for serial connection to all the leading control panels like Pyronics, Honeywell, Orisec, uh, different variants of Pyronics, Risco control panels, Texicom, Scantronic, um, uh, HKC, Bisonic, Vanderbilt, GSD. It's an extensive list. We've also got a lot of panels that aren't on this that we've got uh, manuals for as well. So if you need any additional manuals, then please feel free to contact us. So we're going to install this on a, a, a Pyronics Euro 46. So we quite simply, we just click here and this will now open up the install guide for us. So what it will show us is the manufacturer, the model, the version number, the minimum firmware that we're looking for, it will tell us any cable required, and this one's provided with the Dualcom Pro unit in the box. The panel profile, uh, Euro 232, that's the option that you would select within my base. But then as we move along here, you can see there's a, a lead here. So this lead comes out with the Dualcom Pro unit, and the lead actually has three ends to it. It's actually uh, this lead here. So you can see it's actually got three different ends. So you can connect via 485 TTL 232 to to various control panels. We've got lots of different leads to connect to, to lots of different control panels. So you can see there that this is saying that you're going to connect the six pin plug uh, onto, the, um, onto the control panel. So what it then shows you here is the terminals on the uh, Dualcom Pro unit, it will say that the green wire from that lead connects to return. The blue wire from the lead connects to the terminal which is named RS232R and the red terminal on the lead will connect to RS232T. So it's telling you what lead connects onto the pro unit and what three wires connect to, uh, to on the, uh, on, on the Dualcom Pro. So next we go down to how to actually install the unit. So what we've now got is the panel programming. So this will then show you how to program up the control panel to do your alarm signaling. Uh, most people when they're doing serial connectivity and plugging onto control panels, will be sending at SIA level three through to the monitoring station. So the panel programming will show you how to connect that up correctly and how to program up the control panel in order to send those alarm signals. There's also a section here for hints and tips. So different control panels work in different ways. So if we, if we are aware of any hints and tips that can make the install easier, then we'll show you what those are within each of the different manuals. One of the things that people are talking more and more about now, especially in the, the current climate and especially with the current restrictions, is the ability to do upload, download and remote maintenance. And I believe that that will become uh, more important for, for lots of companies over the coming months and years. So what we'll show you in all of these panel guides is how do you program up the control panel to allow you to dial into that uh, control panel remotely, utilising the Dualcom Pro as a vehicle to connect you from your premises through to the site utilizing the panel manufacturers upload download software. So I mentioned before that there's lots of different manuals that we've got on here. So I showed you the Pyronics one before, but again, if you were going to install utilizing a, um, a Honeywell control panel, then again, you just click on what panel you're using. You go, it tells you what pin connects to where on the, um, on the dual com unit. So we try to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. So next, I'm just going to go into the unit that we were um, installing before, which is this one here. So as I scroll down a little bit further as well, you can see that we've got the ability to upgrade the firmware. So my unit's currently working on version 2.19. There is a new firmware available. It's, it's a version 2.20. We, we only ever make uh, minor changes to the unit just to improve reliability, performance, etc. So we would only recommend that you do a uh, firmware update on a service visit. If there is a reason to do a service, uh, to do a firmware update, we'll notify you and let you know if it's a critical update that needs to be done. And these can then be carried out over the air with no need to uh, attend um, an actual site. As we scroll down a little bit more, what we'll also see is all the alarm signals that are being sent. So when we're doing a dual path device, we will always see four alarm signals. We have different uh, connectivity paths into different ARCs. So if we're doing dual path, each path will send two alarm signals through to each ARC. So these were the test calls I sent earlier on. So we can see here radio module number one sent through at 1021, radio module number two sent through um, radio module number one, um, and then module number two. So you can see one, two, three, four test signals going through to the ARC. 
Well, this will show you any alarm. So if you were to press the arrow here, and you can then say, I want to see the last week's worth of alarms, then instantly you've got the last week's worth of alarms displayed in front of you. Again, if you want to see the last, last month's worth of alarms, then you can do that quite simply just by clicking on months. This never takes away from the fact that you've always got to check with the ARC that they've received their alarm signals correctly. And if you're doing pins, that they receive them the right way round. But I believe that MyBase gives you additional functionality and features just to manage your signal and estate in, a, yeah, in further detail.